Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to install the Shimano M7100 SLX rear derailleur to your bike. This is 12 speed, so I'll go ahead and we'll run through the steps. Right, so here we have the derailleur, so I'll just go ahead and show you a few things on it before I actually go ahead and install it so you're aware of what I'm talking about. And I'll show you it while I've got it in my hand. So you've got the clutch lever there. To make sure that's down like so when you're installing it in the off position then you've got the high and low screws or hex heads there two there so the high screw is the top one there the high screw being the one that does your smallest cog at the back so your 10 tooth and the low screw there which does your largest at the back your 51 tooth on the sprocket the cassette there and there's the final adjustment screw there the B screw just there two and a half uh, sorry two mil hex heads these are all three then you've got your pinch bolt for the cable that's there that's a four millimeter hex head then the actual mounting of the derailleur there which is a five mil hex head Allen key there. See your cable comes in here, so your outer cable like that goes in there, like so, and your cable goes through to your pinch bolt. And also on these, I'll just show you it quickly while it's off. There's a line there, as you can see, that line there. So that's where the teeth on the largest sprocket on the cassette line up when we do the final adjustment with that line there, so the B screw, which is that one there. When we adjust that, is to get the teeth to line up with that notch there. You can see. So I'll just point that out now so you're aware of it later on. And actually see it better when it's off the bike. So that's the dry layer, so I'll go ahead, let's get on with it. Right, so we'll mount the dry layer to the bike. Now, what you want to look for here is, as you can see there, the screw's coming through and it's touching against the tab there. And then the dry layer hanger touches against there when it's on the bike, so it's like that. So then the screws touching on that side and the hanger there is touching up against there like that when you're screwing it on. Make sure you put a bit of anti-seize if you haven't got any on the thread as well before you mount it on. So we just get that in position to start with. So making sure the tab's touching the derailleur hanger like I just showed while you're tightening it up just keep your eye on it and make sure it is so we'll nip that up then pinch it up then you can torque it up to 8 to 10 newton meters on that so that's torqued up now we're ready for the next step right so as you see I've just mounted the derailleur on there as you see there I've got a new cable running from the shifter all the way through so if you're mounting this brand new and you're putting a new shifter on you've got your new cable all the way through ready if you're not if you're just mounting the derailleur on your chain you're swapping a derailleur for some reason or whatever then make sure that before you carry on make sure that your shifter is shifted down to your 10 tooth at the back so as you're in the right position to start with on the shifter so make sure that's shifted down and also on the barrel adjuster on your shifter just make sure you test it just by winding it all the way in and then just back it out say a turn and a half back it back out a turn and a half just in case yours isn't set like that so it's better to do that just in case you don't know what it's like to begin with you're not feeling something that's brand new say so I'll just point that out Right, so the next stage, we've got to set up the high and low adjustment screws, the two screws there, or hex heads, whatever you want to call them. So, starting with the high screw, which is the 
top one there. What you want to do is, you can see the top guide pulley there, and that wants to be, as you can see at the moment, it's in line with roughly the second sprocket in. We want it in line with the outside, just on the outside edge of the ten tooth there. So we've got to get that over this way, the outside of the bike. So locate your hex head 2mm there, and then just turn it anti-clockwise and you'll see that coming over. So once you, you're happy with it, just in line with the outside edge of the teeth, of the uh, ten tooth with the guide pulley, you can get it spot on, then that's the high adjustment done and then we move on to the low adjustment. Right so we're ready to do the low adjustment now which means getting it in line with the 51 tooth for the back. So what you want to do is just push down on the cage and then just push over by hand the drailer and see if it's anywhere near in line. If it's not then if it stops like here, the second one in say, it's not gone over far enough, then you can adjust it, anti-clockwise will move it towards the largest, so towards the spokes, so you want it dead in line with the largest at the back. So all we do is adjust it whichever way you need to go, probably be anti-clockwise, you probably want to do anti-clockwise. Just bring it over until you're happy when it's dead underneath, like so, pushing right across till it stops. When it's dead in line, that's the high and low adjustments done. Right, so next we're ready to install the cable. So we've got the full length cable ready in. Then you want a new piece of outer. So when you cut that to length, make sure that you cut it with a nice sweeping bend in it. And so you haven't got the drailer like that, you want it down touching the drailer hanger when you're measuring up your cable, your outer cable to length. So once you've cut one of those and you put some ends on it, if yours didn't come with a new piece out of the box, you're ready to go ahead and install that. So just pass the cable down through the ring there pull it all the way through and make sure your end here is actually right down inside as far as it can go. Then what you want to do is slacken your pinch bolt off there and just pass the cable in round behind it. It just goes round behind the, the washer, the plate. Pull that in position then it comes back round like so and then exit is back out like that. So when you're holding it, make sure again that your shifter is shifted down to the lowest if it isn't already. Otherwise you wonder why you haven't got all the gears later on. So what you want to do with a 4mm hex head for your pinch bolt, don't pull on the cable. Is if you pull on it too hard, you'll move the drailer across without realising, then you'll be a tooth out to start with. It won't be in the 10 at the back. So it's best just put it, wrap it, cross it over like that. So it's behind the plate. And then make sure also that you're not pulling it up away from the hanger. It's got to be touching the drailer hanger when you pinch up your hex head there, your 4mm. Let's go ahead and just pinch that up in position. Like so, so I'll just pinch that down, making sure then that it's still underneath the lowest at the back to start with. Right, so the next step is you see we've got the cable pinched up, don't cut it to length, just leave it as it is. Now, what you want to do is so obviously the shifter is still down at the 10 at the back, we just put the cable in, that's all we've done. So, if you go up to your shifter now 
and just shift across. See, we don't need a chain on there to do any of this. All you've got to do is push down as it starts to go across as you shift in, just push down on the cage and it move the top guide wheel out the way. Otherwise, if you don't, it will hit into the cassette. So, all we're doing now is we just want to see we know that you've got it in line there because we set it up with the adjustment screw earlier. So as we shift over, we want to make sure that the guide pulley is in line with each individual gear as we go across. That's all we're going to do. So you can look directly down from above onto the cassette or you can look from behind. I've just got the camera set up behind, saves me holding on to it, trying to look, you can't look directly down from above with a camera very easily. So all I'm going to do is look down myself from above to see because obviously the camera's in the way to do it behind so I'll just shift up and as I do as you can see there so that one looks pretty much in line and as we go across I'm just seeing if they're anywhere near in line if they are if that guide pulley is in line as you go over with each individual gear then you know when you put your chain on there that it's going to work straight away so I'm just shifting across like so just seeing where we're at as long as it goes right over to the largest at the back so I'm just checking that And you can shift back and check them. And if you do that a few times, backwards and forwards, just to see if they're in line. Now, if you was you were shifting up and you one was landing the top jockey wheel, the guide pulley was halfway in between a cog one of the sprockets then to move it over a bit more so it's in line then what you want to do is just go up to your barrel adjuster and turn your barrel adjuster out so wind your barrel adjuster not a lot just a few clicks just to see if you get in dead in line that's if you need to this looks pretty good so I'll go ahead we move on to the next step which is obviously getting the chain on there I'll just show you where you want your chain which position you want that in right as you can see now I've just put the chain on so people say what about sizing the chain well put it around obviously it's single at the front just put it around the 10 at the back so it's on these when it comes to the end final adjustment you want the derailleur, you don't want the derailleur down like that because by the time you change all the way up to here to 51 the derailleur will be right round and it affects your B screw adjustment so that's the one up here it's pushing onto your derailleur onto there so it affects that, otherwise you won't be able to line it up properly so you want it back like so when it's on the 10 at the back Obviously the chain's still got tension on it, enough tension. Obviously this is a clutch rear derailleur as well, anyway. So, so you can see there, it's not down like so, it's back. See the chain isn't interfering with anything here. You can fit, fit your finger through there easily, it's nowhere near the, the guide pulley. The guide pulley's up there and the chain's coming round, so the chain's are nowhere near touching. You've got to big gap in there and that's how you want it because like I said when it comes round I'll show you later it will affect if it's right round here you'll never get the B screw adjustment correct so I thought I'd just show you that and also if you're using a Shimano chain make sure that the writing's on the outside of the chain like so and if you're using a quick link in it 
So if you're using a quick link, master link, like so, make sure that the arrow, there's an arrow on it, make sure the arrow is pointing backwards towards the drylia when it's on the bottom here. So it's pointing backwards towards the drylia. So I'll go ahead and we'll run through the gears now and see if we're anywhere close without making any adjustments. We still haven't cut the cable or anything, we just put the chain on. So all I'll do is run that up and see if we got the gears. So all you do is pedal and then just change up and see if they're running okay. If you get one that's hanging up halfway through the change, then you can just go ahead and tweak your barrel adjuster slightly, but you shouldn't need to if you've done it correctly in the first place, they should go all the way up to the largest, so we go up to the top, like so, and I'll just stop it there, and I'll show you what I mean about the B screw adjustment now, now we're on the largest 51 tooth. Well, as you can see I'm on the inside of the dry layer, now the line I was talking about earlier, if you can make that out or not, in there, as you can see the teeth come down and they're in line with that. So that's using the 2 mil hex head down in there, like so to adjust that gap. So whatever yours needs doing, it should be pretty close, like I said, if you, because if you had the chain too short, then it would pull the cage further around towards the front of the bike and that gap would get even bigger and there's no way that you'd be able to adjust it because you'd run out of adjustment on that screw or hex head to get it to close the gap up so if you push that forward as you can see it moves further and further away so the lines there if you imagine it was right down there to start with because your chain was too short then there's no way you'll close that gap up by adjusting the screw because it's too far. So you want it like so in the first place and then you can easily, you've got plenty of adjustment on your screw to, t to either close the gap up or open the gap up, whichever yours needs. Might only need a turn half, might only need a couple of turns or something on there just to make that perfect so the teeth are in line with that line indent there. So once you're happy with that, then we go back round, we run through it again on the stand. Now the B screw's properly set up. Run down, up and down your gears a few more times, make sure you're happy. Right, so now we've done the uh, B screw, I'll just run back down through the gears. See there. I say that's not changing there. Sluggish to change on that one. So that I just want to tweak on the barrel adjuster just to sort that out. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. Right, so there you go, so once you're happy with it, what I'll do is snip your cable off to length, once you're 100% happy, just snip that off, you're on about 20mm and then snip it off, put a stop on the end. Right, so there's the installation all complete now. It's ready to go. Right, so if you found the video helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe, and I'll see you then.